Hello everyone and uh, welcome to re-entry. In this video we will take a look at the new procedures of how to perform an SPS burn using the Apollo guidance computer, uh, basically the AGC, um, specifically program 40. Um, and we're going to use that to plan and execute a full burn. So we are going to use uh, the more realistic uh, approach and procedures to executing the the burn today, uh, but keep in mind that uh, this is still uh, simplified uh, compared to the real thing uh, that the astronaut actually had to to do. But the procedures are based on the real checklist, and this is an iteration towards even more uh, realism when uh, performing these uh, procedures to. Uh, for example, execute burns around the moon uh, to increase or decrease uh, the orbit, uh, lunar, lunar orbit injection, uh, trans-Earth uh, injection, injection, etc., etc. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, let's just get started. So, first of all, I'm going to open up um, the burn planner, and uh, we are going to insert a very simple burn at around 200 feet per second at perigee and this uh, will uh, happen in about uh, 40 minutes uh, from from now so at uh, 83 hours intermission 51 minutes and 23 seconds so with a burn plant i can hit uh, request and i would uh, receive the pad so the first thing that you need to do uh, when uh, you want to execute uh, an SPS burn in re-entry is to uh, uh, run program 30. So on the AGC we are going to uh, insert verb uh, 37, hit enter and then 30. And this will basically tell me uh, uh, the ignition time and you can see that this has already been configured to uh, uh, what we requested in the burn planner. So 83 hours, 51 minutes and 23 seconds intermission. And we have uh, planned a delta V of 200.0 uh, feet per second. I'm going to hit pro and uh, program 30 will now calculate the resulting orbit uh, once we're done with the burn. Uh, this is obviously just an estimate and there's factors involved that uh, could make you know the the burn itself deviate from these values but it's a good indication and i'm going to just uh, hit uh, pro so now you can see that we're now counting counting down we are at uh, t minus 37 uh, minutes and uh, 33 seconds from burn so i'm just going to keep this uh, thing on uh, for a little bit and uh, I'm going to show you the new checklist that I have added to the game and it's a new section called uh, thrusting and uh, you can see uh, guns and navigation SPS thrusting and this is P40 and if I now open this one uh, you can see that there's a whole set of procedures that requires me to get into program 40 and then um, set up the panels and run some tests and basically get everything prepared for the burn itself. Uh, I will be following this uh, checklist as far as uh, I can, but uh, obviously I will be speaking and uh, walking you through some of these procedures at the same time, so some things might deviate a little bit. Uh, in addition, I've um, <coughs> added the run feature for this checklist so you can go ahead and hit run to actually uh, get some guidance through this checklist as well so i'm going to do that so i'm going to hit run you can see that the checklist guidance system is now uh, popping up on the ui here so um with that i'm going to uh, very quickly uh, on the ems uh, set uh, the burn to 200 and I'm going to leave it into standby and if I re remove, remember it before the ignition I'm going to hit that uh, switch and put it into normal uh, together with uh, as a backup to uh, my burn. So this is the pads. Um, 
uh, nominally, uh, you could go in here uh, into crew members and um, uh, pads, and then we could open, for example, um, the the pads for executing burns uh, and so on, if you want to. But for now, I'm just going to use this data here. Um, I'm not going to need uh, too much of it because most of it has already been been set up from uh, using the burn planner. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead with the checklist. We're at T minus 35 uh, minutes from ignition. So first of all, it's just some prerequisites. Uh, feel free to go through them as well if you need to. And then um, on the tracker here, uh, I can hit that zero uh, uh, switch if I want to, if you want to go ahead and use the objects and uh, uh, those things. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to skip that. So um, now I'm going to, first of all, um, time scale a little bit closer to the burn itself to, let's say, 20 minutes. There we go, and I'm going to hit Pro. The, the first thing that uh, we uh, want to do before I dive into uh, going into program 40. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to follow the checklist here and go into uh, zero, 00. Uh, and then um, I'm going to make sure that the uh, ordeal is set to iner uh, inertia. We don't need that. Uh, and then um, before I actually go ahead uh, with program 40, uh, I wish to do oh, one more thing, and that's uh, to run program 52. And uh, program 52 is to basically um, align the um, inertial platform with the burn direction. And uh, to do that, I can use option one uh, I have a dedicated lesson on program 52 if you want to learn more about this. Um, but for now, I'm going to uh, insert uh, 1 into register 2. And to do that, I hit verb 22 and uh, register 2 blanks. And I'm going to insert 1 and then proceed. And this will basically drive the uh, inertial attitude uh, so it matches the burn direction. This means that if the spacecraft's nose is pointing through uh, 0, 0, 0 on the F die, uh, we are pointing into the direction of the burn. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, to also run uh, verb 49. This is basically the auto maneuvering. Uh, I also have a dedicated lesson on this if you uh, want to learn more about this. But it basically asks. Uh, uh, it tells the computer you know, what attitude we uh, wish to hold relative to the inertial platform. And since uh, this is now aligned with the burn direction, meaning that 0, 0, 0 is the burn direction, we can um, reset all of these values to 0. So I'm going to uh, do verb 22 again to change uh, register 2 into 0. And then I'm going to enter that and then hit Pro. And then we're going to copy the values and execute this one here. And I'm just going to hit uh, uh, Pro and to close that. And there's going there's some upcoming changes to these procedures, but uh, I didn't want to roll that out uh, right now. But you see some of them in the next part when I'm going to run uh, program 40. So the checklist then asks me to enter. Uh, verb 37 uh, noun 40 into the diski so i'm going to go ahead and do that and now you can see that we still have the same um, uh, auto maneuvering request here so uh, verb 50 uh, noun 18 it's basically showing that um, um, do we want the computer to automatically go into uh, this attitude basically so then I'm going to hit uh, Pro. And uh, you can see that verb 06 is now uh, showing and uh, noun 18. 
and it's going to keep showing that all the way until the uh, attitude is in this position here. So zero 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 in roll pitch and yaw. So let's just wait for that and uh, to speed things up, I'm going to use a little bit of time scaling uh, and uh, ensure that I'm using the directs to kind of help the attitude. Uh, this is obviously not something that you would do in in real life because um, it's wasting quite a lot of fuel but right now i just need enough fuel to uh, get through this maneuver so we should be all good Just kill the rotations here and get into roll. And then we're going to monitor this page on program 40 as we get into the final attitude. So now I'm just going to let the uh, uh, computer uh, guide us to the correct attitude. And once we are in uh, within limits of this attitude, uh, this uh, warp, should, cha warp sh uh, should change to 50, meaning that the, the maneuver is uh, complete. So you can see that on the uh, guidance systems, uh, for the checklist guidance system, the spacecraft auto maneuver starts. This is something that it's doing, and we had warp 06 uh, now on 18. Then it asks us to monitor the F dice as we would move into uh, the current. Uh, the correct attitude and then we could see that flashing we were 15 out 18 uh, when maneuver is complete and you can see that uh, right now so uh, with that uh, we are going to do some preparations for the ignition uh, if we take a look uh, we should be uh, uh, the burn is at 83 hours 51 uh, minutes into the mission, so we have some time. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, do the ignition preparation. So I'm going to go through this checklist quite fast. Um, for those who know the Apollo systems, uh, this should all be uh, famil familiar. So make sure that uh, we connect the main bus tie. Hey, you can see DC walls going down and DC amps increasing. It's all according to checklists. Let's do the same for B. And then um, we have the SPS helium, helium valves. They're all bar barber pulled and uh, they're set to auto, so they should automatically open once ignition is commanded. And Let's also disable this as we are going to do some tests uh, pretty soon. Okay, and uh, uh, RHC2 is uh, both of these uh, hand controllers, they're always always armed in re entry for now. I've been uh, starting to add some functionalities to this, and I wish to turn this into proper buttons and uh, interactions at one point, but for now, I'm going to leave them as a functional button for these at least, and then add the arm uh, arming uh, uh, switch as well. So, um, in order to um, control attitude during an SPS burn, um, we have, um, it's completely dark outside right now, but there's an engine in the back and it has a gimbal that allows it to uh, kind of uh, pitch and yaw the uh, engine uh, to, uh, to kind of uh, steer the spacecraft uh, as we burn. And some of these features has now been implemented, but also it's just in, a, in its first iteration now from the old placeholder logic into kind of this first state. 
which means that uh, I still have some uh, uh, developing to do uh, to kind of complete all of that. So um, getting back to the checklist, we need to hit the gimbal uh, motor P1 and uh, your one up, and then we are going to check the auto switch over check. And now we have a motor one uh, running, and there's two motor motors used to drive uh, the SPS, and at least one of them is needed to to gimbal it. So the first check is to get this one into a clockwise uh, rotation, and then um, we are going to set this to GPI, and you can see that uh, this is the current. Um, trim settings, everything should be at around zero uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> and then if we uh, try to kind of steer the spacecraft, you can see that um, uh, we are uh, uh, not moving this thing at all. So uh, the next thing that we want to do is to uh, uh, do a TV, uh, secondary TVC check. This is basically uh, running uh, engine two, and if we twist this one to the uh, counterclockwise, uh, no, I mean the clockwise position, uh, we are switching the guidance systems, basically the control systems, over to SCS, uh, but also uh, enabling manual uh, thrust vector control, which is the TVC, and um, that requires engine two to be be running. So then you can see that we can now move the, the gimbals here. You can see that on the panel here if this is set to uh, GPI. So <coughs> with that we can say that this is a success. Then we're going to switch this back into neutral and I can hide those function buttons. Then we'll reset these things. And then we are going to hit uh, Pro, and this will um, repeat basically uh, the uh, maneuver request. I can hit Pro again. You can see that it then repeats it. And uh, once verb 50 is showing, and if you hit Pro, it's going to um, uh, retry doing this. So we can see that it returns to verb 06 now let in. Then N50 when complete. Uh, in order to get away from this, uh, I've changed the procedures to program 40, so then we are going to hit enter. The next thing uh, which we are going to do is to do the uh, gimbal test uh, drive test, and uh, this is going to move the gimbal engine in a specific pattern. So then I'm going to hit pro. You can see that the gimbals is now being moved. That's pitch, and then yaw plus two degrees, minus two degrees, and zero. And uh, you can see that this pattern, and it is automatically then going to proceed to a noun 40 when complete. So this is the pattern. You can see flashing verb 50, noun 25, uh, checklist 204. This is the gimbal uh, drive test. Hit pro to accept it. Uh, you could skip this. You, if you would hit enter here, it would, be, uh, would skip it and go directly to to this page here. And right now uh, you can see that we're um, seven minutes away from, from ignition. So let's hit pro on that. Then uh, we uh, uh, should time scale to two minutes, but since I will be talking, I will just go ahead and, and complete uh, all the steps uh, in the checklist uh, right now. So the next thing that we want to do is to uh, uh, arm this uh, SPS engine, and I'm going to do both of them. So you can see that these switches are now pointing up, meaning that um, the SPS is armed. When the SPS is armed, um, and we get an ignition command to the SPS, um, these ones will rotate. So we'll basically get uh, indication that they, uh, the valves are open and uh, you might see some motion here and the SPS fuel and oxidizer quantity will start to decrease. There might be some uh, uh, oxidizer imbalance uh, uh, 
there as well. But this one can be then increased or decreased to balance the mixture um, as you go. This is not directly implemented, but there's some logic that uh, drives it uh, based on uh, it using more or less oxidizer compared to fuel. And this could get into an unbalance. And then uh, I, I won't make any issues or uh, errors or anything in the logic if this is unbalanced. But in, in real life, you would need to keep this in balance. The SPS helium valves would cl uh, close or become gray on their talkbacks. And the other things that would happen is that we would get a light SPS thrust here. And then the SPS um, uh, indicator would uh, show uh, something around 95 to 200 percent as we would uh, go ahead with the burn. So with that we have now set up most of the things uh, according to the pad here. So I can just go ahead and close that as we're getting closer and closer to the burn. All right, then um, I'm going to time scale uh, for a little bit. There we go. And I'll leave it. I'll give it some time to get back into attitude after time scaling. Uh, we have the EMS all configured. So with that, I can just go ahead and uh, set that to normal. Now we can see that. Uh, at T minus 35 seconds, the disk clears. And uh, we have a couple of switches to press. And then, um, if you want, you can go ahead and perform an uh, ullage uh, before uh, the burn. Uh, this is not needed in re entry, but uh, we could go ahead and hit those thrusters and then hit Pro. There we go. Ignition, and uh, you can now see that this one uh, is uh, on, uh, on around 100. And this light is illuminated, and we have these SPS injector uh, valves open. They're now closed, and the SPS helium valves return back to barb pole. We have zero uh, on the SPS uh, uh, gauge. We have uh, this burn uh, kind of completed in the EMS and uh, this uh, checklist guidance system will then go through all of these things obviously uh, so we have the uh, thrust light and things will be counting, counting down and uh, basically uh, go through everything that I just told you then we would monitor the SPS engine for cutoff and then once we had the cutoff, we saw that these things were the SPS first light would be out. And uh, we are at uh, 40, indicating uh, uh, engine cutoff. You can see that verb 06 has changed to uh, verb 16, indicating the cutoff. So that means that we can go ahead and uh, shut down the, uh, or disarm the, um, SPS. Then we would verify a couple of other things as well. And we have the gim uh, gimbal positions uh, all at around zero. And then uh, we can turn off the uh, SPS uh, gimbal motors as we uh, no longer uh, need them. And uh, you could go ahead and record some of these values. Keep in mind that you do have access to this notes section. And uh, I did recently wrote a patch that uh, actually saves these notes into your save state uh, if you need to. So but for now, I'm just going to hit Pro. 
and then we would see uh, uh, noun A85 showing. This is not functional yet. It would show you if you would need to correct something uh, using the uh, RCS, for example. So you can go ahead and uh, hit Pro on that to close the program, and then I'll set this to off. Uh, in the real um, uh, program flow, uh, hitting Pro here would actually uh, show verb 37 uh, flashing here, and then you would manually need to enter 00. zero. In re-entry, you automatically go back to 00, zero uh, directly. Um, this is something that I plan to, to fix at one point, but for now, I will just uh, leave it as is. So EMS is on, and then you can go ahead and shut down everything that we don't need. And with that, uh, you could go ahead and uh, so now go into the checklists here. Uh, you could go ahead and check uh, the burn uh, data if you need to. So I think that that was um, something that you could do directly from from program 40 in real life, but for in re-entry, uh, you can do it here. So it was uh, 82. And it would basically uh, show me similar values to what we planned before executing the burn. So we're now at an orbit of 8 nautical miles of altitude perigee and 224.0 uh, nautical miles of altitude of uh, apogee. So that's fine. I can then uh, go ahead and uh, typing too fast. There we go. Uh, if I now go into the orbit view, you can see our new orbit around uh, the moon here with this uh, very high uh, apogee and the low perigee. So uh, with that, I would like to say thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy this uh, new procedures for executing uh, program 40 as well as uh, program 30, um, 52 and uh, getting into the correct attitude using verb uh, 49. Uh, remember there's more to it as well. Uh, you could do uh, verb 48 to reconfigure the DAP. But there's uh, dedicated lessons on, on doing this uh, and auto maneuvering, uh, so feel free to watch them if you need to. Uh, with that, uh, I'd say thank you again and uh, enjoy re entry. <laughs>